some water. There might be a trough around somewhere. Oh, right. Run. Well, no worries about potable water here. I got that. Potable water? Potable. Potable. Oh, sorry. Yeah, your, um, water. your bottle, mate. Oh, that's what you're on about. That, I see the three you're on about. Yeah, yeah. Now. yeah. So there. I don't know if they're clearing anywhere else, but I see it's all been planted for that's what business film. industry yeah. anyway. But that, they live ne next to that woodland. Um, so last time we did a podcast. It was the last time you were here. Yeah, but you were also an alcohol drinking vegetarian. Uh, well, yeah, I said vegetarian. No. I said vegetarian because it was just easier to say vegetarian. And I've been saying vegetarian for. For what? For vegan. You weren't vegan then, you? No, yeah, I was. You were drinking alcohol? Yeah, well, it depends. Certain types of alcohol are. You're drinking ale, mate. At the park. Oh, yeah, that was, I was just <laughs> mashed. <laughs> mate, yeah, at the party, I also got naked and run around a rugby pitch, so it doesn't. <laughs> But when was that November? Yeah, well, we did, so we did it, I think we did the podcast in uh, October, September, October. September, October, yeah. And then we had the HR party, and then yeah. um, and I was at Scotland before then. Yeah, so what I did you, a, what doing since? So oh, after the podcast. Well, during the podcast, I was up in Scotland for like seven weeks, um, just chilling out at that. Well, chilling out, helping out at Horseback UK. So I went up there to do some work. I need to get in touch with them. Yeah. Doing some work with them. Uh, but with the do? weather conditions. What do they do? Horseback UK? Uh, it's like a veterans rehab centre. So it's like a step to recovery. It's not the cure. Yeah. But whether you've been injured physically in on tour or even just through your service, I think. I, I, I'm not sure if you have to be on the WIS system for it. You got your phone on there? No. I don't have time so. Right, I'll do it. Um, not sure if you have to be on the WIS system to go to uh, horseback. But... Um, Due to funding recently that have been cut through various other charities that used to support them, they've had to diversify and they're, they're doing um, disengaged children now and yeah. ex-rugby players. I know a lot of uh, ex-Scottish rugby players go For there. What? Just through the, like dealing with various different mental ailments, mm. so whether that's anxiety or whatever. Um, they just go to the court, they go to the horseback and they do different courses on might be confidence building, communication, whatever. Because it's all equine therapy. That's basically what they do, equine therapy. I wonder what it's like when you go on the sports thing, like, like say you're a professional rugby player, you get into that like, as a kid, that most people do, not professional. Well, have you listened to the... Um, you go to school, you go to college. Maybe you've got have you listened to Tyson's, uh, Tyson's, Mike Tyson's podcast with Joe Rogan? Yeah. And he talks about how when he was a kid he was just conditioned to be this machine. Yeah, but different. Though. Yeah, I know, it's different, but you're... Yeah, all right, but <laughs> you're playing rugby professionally and you're just in that constantly and you come out of that. I suppose it is like coming out of the military where you're sort of conditioned into that. You get injured and that's your yeah. career over. You don't know anything else. It's just a transition thing. So they started doing that. But anyway, I went up to help and just do some general work. So I was helping clear out just the stables and doing field work. They had um, six ra retired racehorses up there and they were retraining the racehorses to do this therapy work because everyone's saying, oh, racehorses are mental. Yeah, I mean, yeah I mean. your face says it all. But... <laughs> They don't, these horses, they've all just kept in stables. They don't go out in a the field. They don't mix with a herd. And they were out there. You could, I was there for like the seven weeks and you could see the change in their personalities. Because they were, because they were, because of the way, the way they were being treated. They weren't just going out, getting exercise, getting run, and then going back in and getting fed and doing the same thing. They were being interacted with. They were doing a lot of lead work. And I don't think they got to round pen stuff yet, but uh, Jock Hutchinson, he was using his quarter horses. He's the owner, isn't he? Yeah, well, one, there's him and his wife, they run it. Yeah. Um, and then there's uh, an ex bootneck up there as well, Jay Hare, I think he's operations manager, who just got accepted into some equestrian guild in London on his. Um, but with his horses that he trains, uh, Gus is his main horse that he uses it and was using it at the time. And what he can do with that horse is amazing. And he's basically using him, that horse, to train the other horses. But yeah. he put Gus in with these, um, for, the, for the Reds, race horses. They all thought they were top bollocks. And uh, Gus just sort of kicked them into touch. And he was like, no, I'm top dog here. Mm. And they, their behaviour levels just come down massively. What breed is Gus? He's quarter horse. Quarter horse, oh yeah. Um, they got a variety, they got some um, 
cobs and other varying horses, but mostly they've got quarter horses there. It'd be interesting to see how they, uh, like, because, you know, you, I think I know more about different African animals, about the way they interact in herds and that. Well, I've never the horses do. You know, like how how the how the the sort of society. Oh, the you got like you got the. Works. Is there like a is there a top bloke? Yeah, or is it always yeah. a top lady? So or? you got within that whole herd. I think there's a, there was about 25, 30 horses within that. Um, oh, I've forgot his name. I was, was going to say Ned, but it's not Ned. It's um, Nimitz. Nimitz is his top horse, and it's the first horse he bought, and he is he's like stacked like a rhino. He's the alpha. Yeah, he's the alpha, and then you got. Winnie, who's the matriarch, so they're the top two, I think. Top three, Matri they pretty Matri much... Matri matriarch? Matriarch, I think it's matriarch. Top three stay the same. What's and the matriarch mean? It's like the female. Top female? Yeah. Right, okay, good. <coughs> I didn't know that. Um, and then from four down to like seven or eight, it's always changing. Changes through the night. You're always fighting through top position. But w within that field, they've got a herd of like... Because of the amount of space they got and the size of the fields, and obviously keep a certain amount of horses on one patch of land, there's, um, I think it's like 17 to 20 horses sometimes in this top field. So you just, there's a whole change. There's two guys, um, Cody, who's an Irish cob, who's got massive anxiety issues and so on. So he's really good for a guy that goes up there and he's really aggressive and pushy. Because the more you're aggressive and pushy with this horse, the more the horse isn't going to do what you want it to do. You have to calm yourself down. And ah, I see. So that, yeah, that works. Right, 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 right. But then his mate, Cody, they is like a, an autistic horse so whenever there's been a breakout and like this horse is not scared of everything else that all the other horses are scared of like all horses are scared of tarpaulins he's just like yeah whatever but something will happen where all the other horses are fine and he'll just bolt right but he's he undoes all the knots so he gets tied he's he's an escape artist basically they all they all um rain horse <coughs> yeah rain horse <laughs> they all escaped one night and um basically through the night they were out chasing down 17 horses because this horse Cody had undone the bolt, undone the gate, and they all just left. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really good. Like, just it's good to watch. And then I've never seen a herd that size on a field that size. And when they all get released, or some of them come back from being held in a different area or uh, different um, stables, yeah, they just go off running around the field. It's mental. Good but I never worked with horses before, so my first interaction with that playing. is going up there and seeing a whole herd of horses yeah. galloping around the field. Um, yeah, it's mental. So I did that. I did a bit of um, hill walking and stuff. So, sorry, so were you up there as a, as a volunteer to help? Yeah, or you I was volunteering. Right, right, yeah. So I did the courses years ago, and I was, every time I've been going up since, I've been volunteering. Yeah. So I went up there to help just through the winter. Uh, and while I was there, I did a bit of hill walking on the, the bad days and stuff that I couldn't really do anything. Uh, so I did like a couple of Munros. Went wild camping, did some wild swimming. So I went up Loch Nagar one day and it was all ice on top, and then I went in the loch after Loch Mick. That was uh, refreshing. Oh. <laughs> um, so I did that, and then I think I was there till New Year's Day. New Year's Day, I went up to Kengorm, met some people, um, like through Instagram, we go hill walking and that. Did some ice climbing, first bit of ice climbing I did up one of the gullies. Where did you get the kit from? I ordered it in, because when I did uh, Loch Nagar with another friend, um, we didn't have crampons or ice axes, and it was a whiteout, and we just kept slipping over on the sheet ice, and it was yeah. just like, right, ordered some crampons and ice axes. As soon as I got them, I was like, right, I want to use them. So, planned the trip, and I went up to Cairngorm, so New Year's Day is when I was going up Cairngorm. So I went to bed at like, I don't know, 8 o'clock on New Year's Eve, and I was up at 5. That was me also. Yeah. Uh, but I was dry then, of course, after the last podcast event, yeah, yeah. where I ended up collapsing your shower, and... Naked. Yeah. Well, normally you are naked in the shower. Uh, don't know about yourself. You, yeah, but you wander around the house before that. Oh, maybe. yeah, well. Um, so, yeah, I did that. Got back. I went to America for two weeks. Met a guy that was in free power of us. Who's that? Bradders. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. cool. Went and, cr went and stayed with him for a few days. He had to go off for work, so I ended up just <coughs> bumming around, meeting people on Tinder, making friends, because I didn't have a car, and in San Diego, where I was living in this... Um, Suburb, I guess. There's no public transport. I'm trying to get out of there into town it was hideous. San Diego, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, but on, on the outskirts, it's like an hour drive or 40 minute drive in San Diego, and no car. So got talking to someone, and they like people just come and pick me up and we just go off and do something. There was a, a friend I made out there. She deals on Tinder. Yeah, yeah. She deals. Sounds surprised that they come and pick you up. No. When you 
I sound well. surprised. Yeah. yeah. And you're engaging someone on Tinder. That's well, just a good way of meeting people. Britain, mate. Britain, Britain, the States. Yeah. Um, but she, she's uh, like a weed dealer. She does CBD oils because it's legal over there. Yeah. So she does CBD oils and that. She was going to all these workshops. And she's like, oh, I'm going to this place. You want to come? I was like, yeah, all right. So just come pick me up, take me on a road trip. While she goes and does her work stuff, I'm just wandering around. So I went to a place called. How did you not come and find out about the CBD and the weed and all that, no? No, I wasn't interested. Mm. It wasn't until I went to the Caribbean and started smoking weed. Um, but. Um, not Rhonda. Um, What's San Diego like, mate? Oh, I, I, there's loads of craft ale there. Like, loads. Like, micro, micro breweries and good that. For in, um, good for a non drinker. I think the gas lamp quarter is what it is. But I went, there was a one bar I walked past. I used to just go in and sit down and just chill out. But um, if I was in town, I like it anyway. But uh, there's loads of like microbreweries in the bars. And I went, walked past one. It's like an old arcade games bar. Oh, you yeah. walk in there, they got all the old arcades like Tetris and Caterpillar and all stuff like that. And so just walk in there, get a beer and play that. Or you, it's just like obviously a gridded system. You just walk around and just, I really quite liked it. Mm. Uh, but then you got um, Bel- wi- Belboa wi- Park. Were the wildfires going on when you were there? No. no. I don't think so. No, they were after I left. Yeah, the wildfires were after I left. I got back in March, I think. Right. Um, what park? Bo- Balboa Park. Balboa Park. Yeah, like that name Rocky Balboa. Rocky. I don't think so. <laughs> the wrong, wrong place, isn't it? Philadelphia, <laughs> isn't it? Rocky. Um, but... Yeah, I went there. That's a nice place to go. There's like museum and all that sort of stuff there. Uh, I think they got a zoo there as well. Never went, but and then just bouncing around. Went like when was when Luke was there. We went to the beaches. Went down just chilling out at uh, Pacific Beach, Mission Beach, all those sort of places. Mm-hmm. Just doing tourist stuff. And then that same girl, she was going to LA, so I got a lift to LA. Walked around LA for like seven hours, and was end up walking through Beverly Hills down Sunset Boulevard. Oh yeah, down towards the pier. And we end up going. For the tourists? Uh, well, Beverly Hills was, super, was really quite. Was it warmer that time? Yeah. Yeah. Was, I just come from here in February to there, and it was like 28, 30 uh, degrees yeah. or something like that. It's hot enough for me. Um, and then in the end, I ended up getting a hire car and just driving around, doing my own thing. I ended up going to a national park, Joshua Tree. I wanted to go there, check out some climbing, bouldering, and that, but it's really hard for parking like you're not allowed to overnight park in the car parks there in the nature reserves how'd you get over there? i hired a car but if you're going to stay over i mean how'd you what did you do with your car no well i was just going to sleep in the car in the car park because ah. that's what i do here if I, or if i didn't have a tent i didn't have a tent with me but you can't park in the car parks so i ended up just driving around seeing some sites going to different places and then uh went back handed the car back in and that was it but i had a, I had a good time but next time i go out definitely need to sort out transport or what I'd love to do is buy save up some money and buy an RV like an old one like I don't know four thousand dollars or something Ugh. fix it up <coughs> sorry mate oh, God. fix yeah. it up and then um, if I knew someone there like leave the RV at their place and then it's there the next time I just have to keep paying the insurance because oh, the insurance yeah. is different you can't I think you have to pay the insurance all the time in America well it's not like here you can just take it off the road and not insure it so but you just pay a low vehicle, you have to pay. I insurance. think so, yeah. You just pay lower insurance. Get away, get over there, get over there, mate. Yeah. Well, it states, depends on states, system. diff different states, I guess. Um, but I spoke to some people that go out there, and like there was, uh, I think it was Waldo and his missus. I think they were in Colorado. They met some guy. He found out he was Power Ridge. He was like, "Yeah, come to my place." And he's like, "There's some horses. Go out on the horses. There's some skidoos. Oh my god! Knock yourself out. That was it. I'm like, yeah, find someone like that. Can I leave my RV on you? Like, yeah. All right. Anyway, that's a sort of pipe dream thing. So I did that, come back, and then I got asked to go to the Caribbean uh, to help this girl restore a boat. So I did there. Is that, went out. Tinder? Is that a Tinder request? No, it was an Instagram request. <laughs> Funny enough, three years ago, we matched on Tinder. We'd like, we talked for a week, she went to Australia, and we never spoke again for three years. Um, but yeah, she, want, she wanted some help. So I, I've been, I started sailing just before we did the podcast. Yeah. Uh, so it's just been over a year now. And yeah, so I went out there, flew into my Mar- oh no, did four days in Paris. So I come back from San Diego, I think I had two weeks in the UK, three weeks, and I went out to Paris for four days and I flew from there to Martinique. We we're in Martinique for a month working on this boat. Martinique. Martinique. Yeah. It's in the Martinique. Caribbean. Martinique. Yeah. It's a French province um, island. 
which was it? yeah, it was like four, all fortified for during the Napoleonic Wars. They were they were um, it was a French occupied island. Um, I think Antigua was English and Jamaica was English. But uh, yeah, it was there. For, where's Martinique then? Up by there, up by Antigua and Barbados. Uh, Barbados, yeah, southeast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's above Grenada. So you've got Grenada, Cariacou, Bequi, St. Lucia, and then St. Lucia was ours, I think. Yeah, I think it's St. Lucia was ours during the Napoleonic Wars. So what's the population like there at uh, Martinique? Is it like... Uh, what, size? Oh, no, demographics. Um, mostly French, white French people. Well, tanned white French people. Um, but they're, uh, it's French speaking. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of locals in that there. They, they hate uh, Napoleon as a staff. <laughs> There's a statue there of his, I can't remember his wife, Duke? No, I can't remember. There's a statue there of his wife and... Mrs. Napoleon. Yeah, Mrs. 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 Napoleon. Mrs. Yeah, Mrs. Mrs. Yeah. Um, but she's got no head on the statue and she's covered in blood. Because, <laughs> because um, during his reign of his empire, he brought back slavery. So slavery had been abolished. He brought back slavery. Ah, uh, really? While, during, yeah, so... When was he in? Oh, like 1800s, wasn't it? Uh, he was defeated in 1815 at Waterloo. So he was defeated before then, got sent to um, Alba. Yeah. Or Al. Yeah, it's Alba. No, not Alba. Yeah. Alba's the island just off of Italy. Yeah. And he was exiled there with one unit of his um, lead, is it Legion Guards. Sorry. Um, yeah, he was sent there with one of his units. He escaped Elba and got back onto mainland France and started marching through. And one of his generals, General Ney, was sent down from Geneva or wherever to intercept him and block him. And when they got there, they just met up and combined forces and started <laughs> marching through France and gathering traction again. And then the war, well, the Battle of Waterloo was 1815. It was like September or something like that. I can't remember the exact date. Yeah, man, but like not, not far before the Industrial Revolution was taking place. That would have still thought. It was alright to have slaves. Well, we, we'd stopped <laughs> slavery. Well, I, I, um, I went to Portchester Castle when I was down in Portsmouth last time. And um, the history, of, that was a prison basically. And it held up to 8,000 8, prisoners at one point. Um, all French from the mm. war. And the black prisoners that were captured from the Caribbean, who were fighting for the French, they were brought over to Portchester, held in the prisons. And they were just being robbed and abused by all the French people who they were fighting for. Um, so they all got put onto the the ship. They had a load of ships there that were demasted and used as prisons because they didn't have enough space. So the conditions on there were shit, but it was for their own safety. When they got released, um, there was a, a an officer there. He went back to the Caribbean. They brought back slavery, so he then started a militia and started fighting back against the French. And he died doing that because of Napoleon. And anyway, so this statue, they hate Napoleon. Yeah. So they basically keep the kept putting a head on the, the statue and it kept getting knocked off and it keep covering it in blood because he brought back slavery. Um, so yeah, I did that and then we sailed down from Martinique through different islands, stopping at different places. Whose um, boat are you on? This chick's boat? Yeah. Um, so while working on that, uh, we had a few problems, like engine problems and things breaking because it was, it needed a lot of work and some things weren't getting done. How old was that? So, 60s, I think. 1960s, I think. Um, it's an old French make, like an ML, like catch catches and stuff. It's got two masts, one at the front's bigger than the one at the back. And huh. but uh, it's like we were a crew of five initially, then it was down to four before we left Martinique. What difference does it make if, it, if the one at the front's taller than the one at the back? If the one at the back's taller, it's a schooner. Apart from the name, how does it steer? Uh, it's it's just power distribution, I think. But it depends on where your keel is and your your rudder and everything else. Because if you're mast is further back from your keel it's going to push the back end around you get more power in the back right, okay. and you got more power in the front so if normally i think the mast i'm not a fucking boat builder but i think the mast your main mast is above your keel okay and the keel's your fin that comes down yeah so you've got central power if you like so your pivot point is the keel and where your mast is um so the more mass you got the more sails you got the more speed you can get you can use more wind yeah. so a lot of boats now they just want single mast and it's called a sloop and that's just one big sail coming it's called a what? A sloop. Sloop. Yeah. Not a, not to be confused with a sloop. Sloop, schooner, and... <laughs> and then, what was that? 
Uh, there, there's loads, mate. This schooner catch sloop. Um, there's and cutter. The catch is the one that's got a taller mast. The front, front the and back. yeah, and then you got um, cutter rig. So I you always got, wonder why these names. What these so names you got your right? foresail at the front. So your jib or Genoa. But if you've got a cutter rig, you got like it's three. A couple of them. Yeah, two yeah. or three. Um, and it's just again more sail area, or just you can have different sails wrapped up on different bits. So depending on the wind types. So, but I learned a lot there. So there was some things like just doing rigging and stuff like that, like putting in a mast and fitting in the shrouds and the stays, which are all the metal cables that go up and hold the mast in place. Never, would never have been confident doing that. But the amount of times I went up the mast and I was sorting these things out with the people that were fitting the mast to the boat. Being confident up at the height? No, well, just doing it because it's, yeah. if, if that fails, the whole mast is coming off and it's going in the sea yeah. with yeah. your sail on it and everything. And stand side, you'd probably have to cut it off. But because I did a lot of work in the Caribbean on this boat, I was like, I'm now confident to do more. So um, the guy we were in with, Matt Blair, mm -hmm. he bought a yacht, I think it was last year, and it was been up in Newcastle and he had a problem with the furler, which is the basically what wraps your head sail around your forestay. Yeah. Forestay is the cable that goes from the top of the mast to the front of the boat. So he had a problem with that, it was seized, he couldn't get the sail out. So he ordered some new bits in. And I went up there to help him. He's on his own. He, could, he had no one to help him get up and down the mast. You need two people because someone's got to winch you up the mast to get you up there. So I went up there and helped him out with that. Took it down, which would have cost him like 600 quid. Just charging, like, it's, it's, I just asked for fuel money, basically. Oh, you towed it down? No, I, I drove up to Newcastle. You have to lower it down. You have to disconnect all the bolts. Oh, you took the mast down? Yeah, no, I took see. the, the, the four stake. The, 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 the mast was still in place, but just put a rope in place. He then took it off to the shop. Got a new four stay made and foils. The foil is like uh, an aluminium tube which the sail goes into, and that's what the sail wraps around it. So, took that away, got it back. We spent however much it was on this new four stay or new foil, and then we fit it again. So, I and it was like I think it was because I drove from Colchester the one time to Newcastle, picked up some cats on the way. Oh no, that was the second time, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I know the second time I drove up from um, Gosport to Newcastle in one hit. It's fucked. Um, but by doing that, he paid me, I think it was like 200 quid in fuel, it saved him like 1200. Mm. So, but I, I would never have had the confidence to do that with him had I not been to the Caribbean. Yeah. Because all I'd done is sail in a boat, you do your basic maintenance, your checks and all the rest of it, but you never do that sort of maintenance yeah. stuff. So it was a massive learning curve for me, but I'm glad I did it because I'm a lot more confident in doing things now. Just, Who was teaching you it then? Teach me. To do that when you're in the Caribbean? Uh, there's some engineers there or like yeah. riggers and uh, fitters and that and I was basically just watching them working with them as much as I could because mm. we were basically a volunteer crew we weren't being paid or anything and so I was just trying to get as much from it as I could. Mm. Um, you gonna buy a boat? No I want to buy a boat. I want to get this place fixed up whenever that is. Um, the money that I got left at the end I want to be able to buy a boat there's a marina for Bangor yeah it's like an hour and ten minutes away yeah. if I can have a boat there uh, that'd be ideal because then I can live here and then just like, right, I'm going to go out sailing. I want to sail around the UK, visit every island. That's my first big trip that I want to do. I want to visit every island, like in the Outer Hebrides. How many are there? Don't know. I'll just keep going. I'm not hungry for that. I ain't going to go and stay, but just like go there, have a visit. Some of them you might not be able to get to with a sailboat. Yeah. Um, Obviously, if you've got a dinghy and that, you can anchor off, but if the anchorage is really poor, if it's all rocks and stuff, you ain't got nowhere to, you can't do it because if, with the tide change and everything, if your anchor shifts. Freezing. Yeah, that's what blankets are for. Wait, it can't be cold in my house. I don't think that cold, is it? Yeah, it's summertime. It's like Who's your man four degrees. Who's around Britain? Oh, I don't know. <sighs> You've done the Joe Rogan podcast. You, yeah, I've seen that. Oh, man, um, what's the problem? What's the problem? There was a guy. Uh, Look, doesn't look too dissimilar to me. He swam the length of Britain, then rode it and ran it. Oh, really? Yeah, Ryan Oish met him. He went to one of his talks. I can't remember his name. Um, Col is it Colin? I don't know. He's the first guy to do it. like a Great Britain triathlon. And then the other guy, he swam around it. Um, but, yeah, I, I think he... I'd, I'd assume he didn't go visiting all the Hebrides. I don't know if he went around the Hebrides or just around the mainland. Mm. But his tongue was falling off, wasn't it? You see the video of that? Yeah, yeah. He's I, his I didn't want to watch it. I didn't want to watch it. Salt water in his tongue, yeah. 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 But when he was stopping, he would stop on the boat and the boat had to stay where he was. 
So like, they'd anchor the boat and he'd stay on the boat, but he wasn't allowed to get off the boat. He was allowed on um, a jetty. He wasn't allowed on mainland. Yeah. He could get onto a, he could get onto a jetty. Right. I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure. So, Might be wrong. So they had a boat following him around. That yeah. was his where he would stay most of the time. Yeah. But off, yeah, because um, I can't remember if I was talking to someone. Or one think, of the guys in the podcast met him. Uh, they, they oh, were, that, that was Glenn that Sadler. Been it, then. Glenn Sadler. No, I don't know. Glenn Sadler. He, he was off. He was off to do the Talisker Whiskey Challenge, and they were training. Oh yeah, that was and it. They, yeah. it was down south, and then the man. Oh, his name nearly came to me there. Uh, anyway, the guy who's swimming around Britain, he stopped off at the same night and they were, they yeah. went and had a brew with him. Yeah. yeah, I thought it because I was meeting loads of boat people. I uh, was checking out the sheep. <laughs> She's <laughs> Remind days. you of your childhood. <laughs> um, yeah, because I, I, I keep meeting people with like boats and stuff and having I mean, different stories. I was thinking it was someone I met through the charity. Um, so yeah, I did Caribbean, come back from there, landed in London. And I went straight from London to Manchester to pick up my car and the next day I was in a costume fitting in North Wales and I was doing a Netflix TV series for cool. Cursed. Kursk. Cursed. Cursed. Yeah. That's where I met their guy, um, Richard McDonald's, is it? Oh yeah, Played, Richard McDonald's, yeah, yeah. came from rugby, yeah. Yeah, but I didn't know. And he was sat at the end of the day, we were all getting a costume taken off and that, and I was like, he's got a Rugby for Heroes stuff on, was that? You not No, I wasn't there. And, <laughs> and I was like... I was, in, I was coming back from the Caribbean. I was like, "What were you in?" He's like, "Oh, Marines." I was like, "All right, okay." And he didn't. We didn't like. He didn't talk much. He basically just because it was the end of the day. We've been there for fifteen yeah, hours. Typical cheesy intro. We just. What were you in? No, I just. I was like, "Oh no, what <laughs> were you?" In? I was like, "Oh, were you in the military or something like that?" And he said, "Oh, I was in four two. I was like, "All oh, right, okay." Do you, um, Edge Parrot, do you know such and so like Dan and that. Um, and then he just and then he left because, like I said, we've been there from five in the morning. I think it's seven in the evening, and. um well, until after, I called Chris and said, were you playing with this guy? And he said, yeah. And basically, just the weekend before, he was on the Piss For You lot playing yeah, rugby, yeah. and then I meet him in the middle of North Wales filming some Netflix TV the series. I'm going to clear it on about. Um, there is a... So, one of the sponsors of the podcast is Rugby Heroes, and they organise fundraising events, and one of the events was a, a beer and gin festival. Is that rug- the same thing? Same thing. They had a, rug- had a rugby match between a, ve- a military veteran side uh, and it was versus the old Lemontonian RFC veterans team. So, um, uh, yeah. And so you bumped into a guy who played in that. Yeah, but, event, yeah I just thought it was a weird coincidence. Like, <laughs> yeah, of all the places. But he was playing a. <laughs> a good day, that one. He was playing a paladin monk. And they were going around killing off loads of druids in the village. And the I was weekend like, before, he was playing rugby with a monk. Yeah. Oh, the monk. The monk was playing. Uh, not a the, monk, the, the monk. monk. The monk was playing, yeah. He's changed. He changed a good way. When that where still as aggressive as he was, <laughs> I've still got his temper. We got under control. Isn't that where Paul was going on about my brother? That's kept getting propped up at the fire. Oh yeah, he's, he got carried out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we had uh, we had like I think we had we had two we had one or, we started off with one or two subs, and then someone got injured. And we had no subs. <laughs> People haven't played rugby since they were kids. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was mega, it was mega, and uh, Gaz uh, Gaz. Some, Sinitas. Yeah. He was there like, playing with a uh, some, some tree hugging headband on. Tree hugging headband. Oh right. Headband. Oh yeah, the headband. It headband. Oh, okay. Was it not like you'd, a? You'd expect like a lesson in though. A buff. Or was it just like a yeah, pl- was platoon? It wasn't buff, platoon buff. <laughs> <laughs> platoon sweatband. Yeah. Oh, maybe that's what he needs to start doing. What? No, like you used to wear a sweatband when you were in Afghan. You fucking. I didn't. I'm sure I've seen you. Yeah, in, in Uganda, in the jungle. Oh, was it? All right. Yeah. You got ripped for it. Did I talk about your smoke grenade incident in Uganda on the <laughs> last podcast? No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I was. Oh. Yeah, but because I, I need to get another buff like for motorbiking. Just well, all of this just gets everywhere. I was thinking maybe there's a thing for you or him for some. Merch. I'd sell them. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose. I don't know. They're not very popular, are they? They're not. You see it's loads of niche people. area, like well, bikers. Yeah. But well, not just well, people pe- walking down the street. You do well. Walkers, like. you do. Yeah, but they're a special breed, mate. Yeah, I know. Well, I'm one of them. <laughs> Shemag. Shemag. I shemag it on the bike. Do you? Yeah. Shemag it. Tuck on the front, mate. Good in the wind. Under the helmet. I have to look into it. 
I've not been on mine for ages. Although we got that ride coming up to Arnhem. Yeah. Next month. That's going to be the long. That's going to be the longest ride I've had in. Well, I mean, my, I'm, how far is it going to be? I don't know, but it's I've got. I've got to come from here. 500 k. Yeah, I've I've done 400 in the past couple of years. Really? Yeah. I mean, I've done a 4,000 this year. Because right, my bike, my bike's just, down the bottom. Only started riding. Bike's March, down the bottom April. of the track, and I'm in Wales, and I got these shit tight. Well, not a shit. They're great in this weather, but the minute the roads get a little bit wet. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um. So, I just. And with work and everything else, I can't commute to work on my bike with all the stuff that I need, like the sleeping bag and all the rest of it, um, and all the food for trucking. Because mm. if I stay out overnight, it's just I can't carry it. It's not practical. So I hardly use my bike, and because it's 400 meters down the track from my house, yeah, I just gotta carry all my stuff down, get changed at the bottom. It's just so unless I'm just going to go out for a day. And before I had the dogs as well. Yeah. yeah. When I had the dogs up until. October last year or November um, I couldn't go out for a full day or I used to just go off and disappear go to someone's house visit someone somewhere on the bike and then come back the next day but can't do it with the dogs yeah I've been going to HR 4 KP and work from there go down early in the morning get their throat in and then work from there on the it's right when the, the weather's nice and you caught the rain twice mate. absolute absolute nightmare and I've got to get one of them i got one of them all over things like an all over shell suit or waterproof thing. Shell suit. Shell suit, you know. Like Gary Gore-Tex. Yeah. Just get one of them. Because they fit under your seat as well. They ain't like that big. Look at this. So, when I, was in, on this. when I was in Cape Town, I was trying to line up an, a, an apartheid podcast. So I was going to get a black guy on. Right. And a white guy on. And um, just have a chat. Like, about and they, they were both... We were all lined up. We got, we got Cam in the end. Um, one of them got one of them got wet feet, wet feet. <laughs> one of them got cold feet. <laughs> one of them got cold feet, and the other one, uh, I don't know what. Happened. Anyway, anyway. So one of the things I learned out there when I was out there recently is that, uh, so you know, over here we call people who are we we have we call people half caste. It's yeah. in between like black and white. We call them half caste, right? Yeah. And we assume like a mix of races, right? Don't we? Yeah. Is this yeah? the blue blood thing? No. no. So in South Africa, right, you got blacks, you got whites, and you got mixed race. And I oh know, you got blacks, you got whites, you got coloureds. Coloureds are what we would call to so look at a mixed race, and coloureds are their own race, mate. They they're considered their own race. It's not like in between. Them. They're considered their own own race. It's mental. So like, it's literally well, three. Like, di- not outcasts, like just. No, they're their own race. Right. You got white people, you got coloured people, so the people in the middle, sort of in complexion, yeah. and you got and you got black people. Three different, and it's been like that for eons. Yeah, apparently the origin is uh, the origin is that a lot of the people who have um, that 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 complexion, so in between complexion, is uh, they're from I think Malawi, I think Malawi or somewhere, right. and they they came in. So they, a lot of them are actually the same race. Hmm. A lot, they actually the same race, and they're like yeah, they're all. Well, because like well, they all like kind of stick together. Like, I suppose if no, like, just all, it's like it's like you know, no, you know a bunch of Welsh people living in England. Yeah, yeah, you you live together as a community. Well, and, uh, well, no, I'm not when I live in England. But it's the Welsh just because there's less of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I think another one is um, when apartheid was on. So apartheid applied to everyone. So if you were white, you were screwed. Except if you were Asian. So the Chinese. They got treated like white people, even though they weren't white. But then the coloured and the blacks, uh, uh, no, if you got caught even speaking coloured people or black people, right? You were uh, uh, police are caught. It's crazy. It's crazy. Do I don't about? know. I don't know a lot about. That I don't know a lot history. about it. I, don't know, I, I know that mental. my nan used to keep telling me when we was kids that uh, we related to Jan Smuts, General Jan Smuts. I think he was like, he was. A is it Prime Minister or President in South Africa? I think Prime Minister. Um, so her cousin married his grandson. That's and she's like, oh, we're related to someone. Oh, okay. And but you go to London, down to Westminster, there's a statue of him there. Really? Yeah. I don't know learned when I was out there. I was talking to people who were Rhodesian SAS. Yeah. They used to jump combat jumps four times a day, mate. Four times. Co- like into battle four times a day. They go out, they get they they jump in out of the plane. Yeah. They do the battle, helicopters come pick them up, they get flown out, 
back in, back get in, up again, get up. back in the plane, fly out, jump in again four times a day. Wait, what do we do? A year? When I, well, two when year? I was leaving, it was four. Oh, no, I was leaving, it was, yeah, it was four, four. Four practice jumps a year. No, and it wasn't even that, was it? Was, wasn't it two? When I, when I left, it was four, I think. Or maybe, maybe oh, well, two. Maybe, maybe two. When did you leave? 2011. Alright, when did... Oh, yeah. Four jumps oh, a day. I wouldn't have been jumping, I was on crutches. Um, which all be, well, before before Afghan, wasn't it like down to two? Because of the amount of airframes and stuff. Possibly. But the amount of blokes, like, we're going, to, going on tour with no wings and oh, yeah. doing a full six months comeback, still got no wings. And you got, but then you got people like, I think my brother was one of them. You got <laughs> blokes coming through depot, everyone's on tour, you're like, right, might as well go do your jumps course. So you got blokes coming back off tour, done six months, they've done time in reg, and they're like, I don't know, say a year. No been, wings. Been, no wings. And they get back and there's some Joe bag in the barracks really? and they've got their wings. It's weird. Um, you could have done, you could have set up a DZ out in Afghan. You've got all the airframes out there and just, all those money in it, I guess. Resources. Money, yeah. Let me check the time, two seconds. Um, what's next on the horizon for you? Well, apart from Holland, just, I'm trying to stay when are you going to stop working? Sorry? When are you going to stop working? I don't, I don't, know, I don't know if I know if it cons, cons, well, constitutes as work. Because uh, I work like seven days. But I think we're like... What do you mean you work seven days? A month. Right. So I think last week I worked two two days. And then week before that I worked another two and I'm doing two next week and that'll do me. That's like my money for Arnhem. But we've got my pension and everything. I could live on my pension. But I'd be like existing. Most of my money goes on fuel, I'd say, because I do so much driving, going around road trips and stuff. I was up in Scotland last week. I did fourteen hundred miles Can in get four days. More economical. Well, I need it for doing my house. I'll get a second yeah. car. Get to get a banger, but it's good on fuel. We, we work. Yeah. We work. We save I money. I used to have a second car, but it's just like with the, the the money on insurance and everything else. Like with the second car starting up a new policy I've got points on my licence and it's just like a couple hundred quid for insurance for a new car yeah the money you save on fuel right so, I had, so you were saying your wagon down there you get you get 31, 32 so, on the so, motor yeah. right? I had a Audi A4 05 plate mate Audi A4 and I'd get a true tank 60 litre tank I get 700 miles to 60 litre to 700 miles to what's that 50 that's that 55 to the gallon right to think how much money you'd save, all you're driving around, where you don't need to uh, drive around your flipping big thing, mate, you, over a month, you would save the money. Well, got, got and me uh, even though you're paying out for a second policy. Yeah. Trust me. Oh, I can't be bothered. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> don't bother. You're saving loads of money. Well, I, well, I didn't think, I, like I said, I had an, an Audi A3 before when I was in the reg, and I didn't feel like I was saving any money at all, and I just sold it. To Phil Briggs, actually. Hmm. He was after a car. But... I'm going to use this to get all the materials I need up to the house and that, and then when I've done what I need to do, I'm just going to get rid of it. I want to get a van. A van would be ideal for me. Just what? like doing the TV extra stuff and that. Just somewhere, van for that? Just somewhere to stay. Oh, to sleep like, in, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then going off camping, like, so going off to Scotland and whatnot, and because like, um, I'm looking at doing a snowboard instructor's course, which I've seen on learning credits. I think it's in Canada. It's like two grand. On oh, learning yeah, there's nothing in there I can do. They're all like, I was thought about doing an electrician's course, but it's just like a year long diploma. But no, just so I can sign off the electro, uh, my, my electrics in my house when I rebuild it. Yeah, but, but you know, but it's like after 10 free, I was like, fuck, I, I ain't got time to do that. Yeah, and I, what I want is like a small, like a four week course or something like that. So just go off and do, there's my ticket. Like, uh, I was going to do an excavator's, get my excavator's ticket so I can do just sit on diggers because that's decent money, but there was no, I couldn't see any courses that I could go and do that for or with the learning credits <clears throat> and then there was nothing really there that suited me there's an ML course so I can do mountain leader and then I'll see this snowboarding one if I do that I'll go out to the Alps in the winter and just do a season out there just yeah Dan, didn't Dan used to do that go out for a season Dan Carter name. yeah well, I don't know if he's instructor or what you know he's got a bar now don't tell no yeah, got his own bar, mate. Down, down in, um, last, well, well that's, I say that, he's a bar manager. Last I seen of Dan was at Matt's funeral, and he's like, oh, yeah, this is Meg, I need to keep in touch with the blokes. Took a load of people's numbers, and no one's heard from him. Yeah, but it's Danny, mate. Yeah, I know. But, but he was at I, Luke, I'm, I'm he, just saying that. He was at Luke's wedding. Was he? He's, got, he's a bar manager now at a bar down in Bournemouth, so we'll have to do that. Get down there. Yeah. 
Yeah, but the thing is, though, mate, he's, he's mega, like, he's so committed to being mega at being a barman. <laughs> he's, that's all he does, that's all he, yeah. like, lives, eats, it lives, eats, shit. He, he bought, Barber. I think he bought an apartment in um, Whistler when he got out, or when he was still in, in Canada. Did he? Yeah, well, from what I heard. And then he was renting that out and he had somewhere to go. Um, I didn't know. But I just thought, if I get my snowboard instructor's ticket, I'll go out to France and wash dishes, I don't care. Because when I went out to Morsey and I was camping out there, had people they were staying above the calf that they were working in and they got a free lift pass so that's like 350 euros for a week i oh, know 350 for 10 days it was for me um you get a free lift pass you get paid and what were they doing just Fish working uh, well no just working behind a bar in a yeah. cafe or something like that and um they were going out and getting smashed every night as you do as kids and most people drink but like they started to shift at two in the afternoon they're in bed until one because they're hanging and we go all that morning to go snowboarding or skiing. So if I go out there, like I said, I don't care what I'm doing. If I go out there, I have the free pass. So I just get up early doors, first lift up, go boarding for a couple of hours, come back in, do my shift, and yeah. go back out and just make time of it. Yeah. Um, or make use of my time rather than just lying, no, because I'm on the wagon now anyway, rather than just lying in my bed, feeling sorry for myself, go and do something productive. Yeah. That'd be hard, um, It's not like I drank a lot. Anyway, when I did well, that's good, but regularly, I would say. Um, but when I did, I used to go to town and fuck myself up. Uh, but I feel more productive now. The amount of, like when I was in the Caribbean, everyone was getting up at nine in the morning and having a Norwegian breakfast, they were calling it. What's that? Vodka and orange. Oh, okay. That was it. Nine in the morning. They'd be hanging. Absolutely hanging. I'm just like, yeah. the only times I felt like shit was when I was smoking weed. Sometimes. Really? Yeah, I used to go like, Felt a bit shit in the mornings. You having it with tobacco? Yeah. Oh, that's fine. Sometimes with, sometimes without. But it's like smoking it with out here. Obviously, it's legal, but it's fucking expensive anyway. It's legally and medicinally, is it? No. Is it? I think. I think. Oils, I'm not sure smoking it. I'm sure you can get it medicinally. Yeah, I'm fucking sure. I don't know. I, 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 don't know. I, I give it. I give it three years, and then, and then you'll start getting. But was that, that I heard on the, I don't listen to the news anymore because it's just. I just get fucking angry. This one on my Facebook and just stay clear of it. But I heard on the radio that um, some kid had his oils took off him, hemp oil, cannabis oil, and um, it was helping him with his ailment. Yeah, it was helping him with whatever ailment he had. When they took it off him, he was just going down. He went down. Like he could hardly move apparently. And they, they allowed him to have it, so the laws changed in that way where you can have for medicinal purposes. Because I had a friend, she had. Um, like rheumatoid arthritis or something like that basically like her whole the joints and like all the flesh was just in agony like even just lying down was painful started taking this oil which she had to order in from somewhere else she's fine she's going to the gym she's doing all sorts of us all sorts of activities and then the distribution company she was going for through they got stopped and she couldn't get hold of the oil anymore and so yeah people don't i mean it's like cbds i'm talking about i'm, I'm carding it up it's a bit of a breeze right. coming through that we went in the shadows, mate. I thought the sun would come out. Right, look at that up there, man. Mm. See that inversion? That's what I was on about yesterday. What? Uh, the, the oh, right, peak yeah. of the mountain just sticking out over the top. Yeah, I mean, with the, like, the CBD oil, so you got, I mean, <coughs> cannabis is made of, you know, made of a bunch of different compounds, like anything is. Like fucking anything is. Uh, the only called cannabinoids, like 16 or 17 of them. And like one's THC and THE yeah. and like a psychoactive component. And the other one is well, another one is CBD. And CBD has no it's like no um, psycho. It's not like psychotropic, psychedelic. It doesn't do anything apart from. Well, it doesn't really do anything. I mean, you got it, 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 of, you know in in terms of altering your mental spirit, but epilepsy. So it's been known. Uh, it's been known scientifically proven that it reduces the impact of epilepsy. So there was a there was a uh, quite a famous case, plants, a well-known mate. case last year, eh? Plants. Yeah, plants. Last year or the year before, and there was a kid, I think it was in America. No, it wasn't America. There was a kid in, in Europe, might have been France or somewhere. Might have been the UK, actually. And uh, this kid would have, on the worst days, like 120, 130 fits a day, a day, non-stop fitting all day. Why is that? Yeah, I know, mate. I know. So I, I've got a lot of you worked it out? No, but... I stopped trying to work it out. Thought, there, must si- some, there must be some. It was 60 every six hours. There. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, it was a fuckload of um, uh, fit today. And then 
when they when they start treating the child with CBD oil, when I say treating the child with CBD oil, I mean a couple of drops on the tongue. That's it. Like a couple of drops yeah. of stuff on the tongue. And so it has you wouldn't know you've been taking it. It's like it doesn't do anything. It doesn't yeah. the tongue and the the uh, epileptic fits are reduced from all that a day down to something like two or three a day. That's how big the impact was. You can even rub it on the skin, mate, apparently yeah. it affects it. It's like, it all sounds a bit like... I, I got a friend a in Klangoflin, she's from Germany. CBD oil is legal, by the way, people. Um, she was diagnosed with, I think it was stomach cancer, or liver cancer, mm. uh, while she was in Germany. And she grew her own cannabis, made her own oils, and treated it herself. No chemo, nothing, she treated it herself with oils. Mm. Yeah, see, that's, that, that, like, that mental crystal, like, tree-hugging stuff, the only thing I believe with that stuff is the CBD oil, because science, science can be proven. But I haven't heard about cancer, cancer thing. I haven't heard about it. I've um, heard about it before, um, but i never actually met anyone that has done it. But like I said, she grew her own. Have you tried CBD though? No. No. Like, cause when I was in California, it's probably the best time to get it. You can get it when you're there, mate. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm just like, not even. I, I tried CBD it. oil for a few weeks, and I was I'd like, bad it. Mine's like, oh, I'm not sure. And I thought, oh, I'll try that. And it seemed to get better, but I'm not sure if it's a placebo effect. Yeah. I've got no idea, you know, I've, I, I, yeah, I was, yes, that's amazing, I think, am I been placebo or not, because the problem is, oh, you know, there's a lot of shops that sell CBD oil, and it's quite watered down, and it says in there, like, you buy something, a, a compound, you say, like, 5% yeah. CBD or something. Well, a lot of stuff is, though, yeah. like, um, like, when I changed my diet, I started buying loads of, like, coconut milks and oat oh. milks and stuff like that, and it's got some in, but it's predominantly water. Right. So I was like, it's, it's not ridiculously expensive. I mean, you go to the right places, you get it pretty ch relatively cheap. But I was just like, I was only using it for porridge. I started using water because it's just watered down product. Yeah. So unless you're making it yourself and you know the quality of it, really, or you're going to somewhere else, but it's been there's all cost there then, isn't it? Yeah, I, I don't know how it is grow weed. But she, this girl, I think she said she spent sixteen grand on cannabis, making her own oils. Jesus. I think, they, I think that's what she, I, from what she said. I think that I think that's what she said. Sixteen grand. But, a huge amount. But, you think you just buy the seeds and plant them? <laughs> but she, um, she doesn't have cancer. She's still alive. So yeah, it's yeah. sixteen grand worth it. It's yeah. like if you earn thirty grand a year, it's not your wages. What, what does she base that on? When, when she went like spend sixteen grand on it, I mean, spend a lot. Well, of money I think basically on it. just the amount that she spent on buying weed. I don't, I don't know if she had the facilities no, to grow I mean, it. No, uh, the decision process beforehand oh no I don't think she said right I'm going to spend this amount I think she basically just kept buying and buying and buying and using it until it solved the problem no I mean to decide that she's going to try and solve it with that as opposed to traditional that way that's the right thing to me. Uh, um, talk to me about Cowspiracy Cowspiracy well you haven't watched it have you yeah. right so it's a film I watched that and then there's another film I watched the other day and it's called Forks Over Knives so two Forks over knives. Forks over knives. Right. So Cowspiracy. Cowspiracy. On it's, Netflix, right? Yeah, it's on Netflix. It's a film made by a guy who's an environmentalist. Everyone thinks it's a so, vegan film so and it's all about... The <laughs> <laughs> it's, I'm joking. I was just trying to think of something to come back. I was like... Um, so he grew up in America. So he grew up on a typical American diet and he was... Um, trying to do as much as you can to save the environment so recycling all these plastics and separating the plastics from the paper and all the rest of this shit riding his bike everywhere and then he said he saw one article his friend posted which was written or posted by the UN saying that animal agriculture contributes more CO2 emissions to the environment than all transport combined so that's planes, trains, ships, fucking everything that across the world? yeah so he started looking into it more and I can't remember all the stats but he basically started researching it going to all these different companies like uh, Greenpeace and Sierra Nevada I think is one of them and loads of other places and he's talking to them about the what they're trying to do or what they think the major cause of um, greenhouse um, greenhouse gases or like breakdown in the ozone or environmental damages and they're listing off all these um, burning fossil fuels and all the rest of it and he says what about animal agriculture and like, oh, what about it or Greenpeace wouldn't even talk to him about it why is that though why wouldn't they talk to him yeah. about it well, I don't know because they didn't talk to him but um, throughout the film it becomes apparent that like the 
agricultural industry in America, this is mostly American based, but the agricultural industry are funding a lot of the charities or different researches into things. And then the more he goes into it, the more he finds out that like, I think it was when he did the film in 2012, that like up to 1400 people have been killed in Brazil for protesting or speaking out against the deforestation of the Amazon rainforest for the use of growing yeah. livestock. Well, there's a lot of about that, like there was a nun, Oh, everyone's crying about the Amazon burning down now, but no one really cared about it before when it was getting cut down. You, if you watch the film, it talks about all the stats of how much it's been cut yeah. down since. What about the nun? Oh, she got um, she got gunned down by a hired gun by the cattle industry in Brazil because she was speaking out. She was campaigning against deforestation. She lived in the Amazon, and on her way home, they, oh, they gunned her down. But if uh, what's so, so what's the alternative to? Well, he, like I said, he was he was going through all of these different things and talking to these different companies and he found out that with the amount of water that animals use and the land it takes to raise cattle and so on it's like a cow will drink 10 gallons of water per 100 pounds of meat so that's per day so you've got a cow that weighs 700 pounds that's uh, that's 10, 10 gallons is in the summer 5 gallons in the winter but if a cow's lactating so dairy industry they drink twice the amount of that it's all on Google. I'll... No way. No it's way. on Google. Look it up. I lived on a farm. Go look it Mate, up. I'm telling you, you have a bunch of cows in the field and you have one at the trough. Look it up. Is that, but are those cows in like a uh, like a battery cow farm? Did you get battery cows? Yeah, it was farm. It's farm, um, what's it? It's not farm race. Come on, so they're all on fucking farms. Um, shh, I don't know, shed race. Maybe it's like force fed the water, maybe. Well, not for, well, what farm did you live on then? Was it just a normal... Do They weren't a, a dairy farm or anything, was it? No, no, no. livestock. It's cattle and sheep. How many? What? Cattle. Fucking everywhere, mate. Like, he, like, fucking everywhere, right. Yeah, that's that's all there. Right. Um, <laughs> fucking how many? Every, thousands fucking of... How many? How many? <laughs> fucking there's everywhere. thousands of cows on the horizon. <laughs> um, but I, I looked it up, and it's like there's a university did a study, and it's just this, the amount of water that cattle drink and sheep drink and pigs and all that so I think it was on a day on average like on a 10 gallon per 100 pounds so they drink between 70 and 100 litres and then you go through the year and it's the, with the amount of crops that are needed to grow and land space it's just it's all the balance of it but it's they're saying that um, the methane that's released from cattle is 60 or 80 percent more toxic or more potent than how do you stop that what do you do? Get rid of all animals? Not all animals. Just stop farming. Like, because the amount of demand for meat is growing with the population. We need so, it. Yeah, all right. Yeah, <laughs> I, well, I'm doing fine. I've, Mate, now you are. You're dead by your forty. Yeah, all right. Well, I've, I've got more muscle mass now than I had done. My legs got bigger. Because I've yeah, I've started going to the gym, but. Um, Broad well, conspiracy. I, yeah. Get into anyway. Diet. So he was doing all of this, and he's he started talking to other people, and he realised that he can't be in like he can't with the impact that the animal livestock industry has on the environment he can't be an environmentalist and still eat meat so he went to see other people yeah um so one of them was a doctor who's been a doctor for 30 years um a vegan for 30 years and basically he, a doctor and a vegan yeah well i think he's been a doctor before he become a vegan and um but he's like yeah i've been i've been a vegan for 30 years i go running every day da, 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 and all this stuff and he's like active he's an old guy but he's still active um and so like i said they go through a whole list of stats of pollution that's caused land mass that's used and how much land you would need like because everyone's thinking grass-fed cows are the best cows best ones to eat but to farm grass-fed cows you need to they need to live for longer i think for a farm a shed fed cow when you feed them grain and feed they live for they get to i think it's like a year shed fed they, go, so yeah, shed they, they get to like a year and then they're slaughtered Whereas a grass-fed one, you need to grow them for like two, two and a half. So shed fed like a battery cow. Yeah. yeah, but that's more or more environmentally friendly than grass-fed because it uses less land. Yeah. They're alive for less time, so they're producing less methane. They're, they're eating less crops. But then it's less humane because they're alive for less time. It's, yeah. It's so we're, living conditions. But you right? can't you can't keep going on about like I think it's uh, people justify eating organic food because oh it's better for the environment and stuff like that. But if you're eating organic or grass-fed cattle it's technically it's worse because of the time that they're alive and all the rest of it and the amount of water that they're drinking 
I, I drink what? An average human drinks two liters a day. You think of what? I think in 2015 there were nine uh, nine point five million cattle, just cattle. In the world. In UK. Okay. And you think about how much they drink a day compared to so say they're drinking 100, 100 liters a day. They're not. Well, look at it. Well, I'm just saying. I'm just. I. I not look, all of them. I looked on Google, and there's a couple. Of, I've looked at a couple of different things, and they're all saying the same thing. Dairy, Mary. But anyway, go on. I see your point. Go on. Right. Yeah. So they're drinking that much water, and I'm drinking two liters a day. I'm, it'll take me decades to drink the same amount of water that a cow would in a year. You reckon we're gonna be out of water? Yeah. Well, well if you stop, well, by twenty forty. So if you stop farming cattle and livestock and started eating vegetables yeah, instead, it's not practical if you're changing your diet. And then plus the long-term thing is I was we discussed before about the different protein that you can get from meat. Yeah, but you just you're just saying that because that's what you've heard. No, but you're just saying it because that's what you heard and read. Well, I'm, but I'm, but I've been doing it for a year now. <coughs> Mate, so everyone's saying I need protein to grow muscle. I've been growing muscle. Yeah, but you're like a year into it. It's yeah. not you don't know, and everyone's different. Well, all right, but I've not. I've it. eaten. Like, look at this. Look at all look right. at it another way. Look at this. Look, I'm not saying vegan diet is wrong. I'm not saying your diet's wrong. But what you say is I don't get any protein. No, I'm not saying that. I'm I don't get the right that. proteins. Right. I am saying that the claim that you can get just the same protein from a, a non-meat diet as you can from a meat diet is incorrect. Because based on... What do you mean? Based on what? Based on there's different proteins so, available in red meats. Right. So I'm not sure about why, why, why do you need these different proteins to do to what? To do different things in the body. So we've evolved to eat meat for a purpose. Right. Yeah. There's a, there's a reason we evolved to. No. There's a reason we evolved the way we have, and a lot of it's to do with the meat and the proteins available to us to build our brains and our hormones. Okay. What maybe, and I am completely going way. You know, there's protein like, in all vegetables. Small yeah, amounts. Know, different, they're different proteins, cheese. Yeah, when you eat different vegetables, you get different proteins. Yeah, but it right, okay. doesn't mean. Hang on, two seconds. Two right, seconds. I stop on. eating meat, right? And there's, mm. let's say, protein. I don't even know what any of the proteins are. Protein Jeff, protein Jeff, right? It's available in red meat from buffalo. Right. I don't know, right? I can eat all the vegetables I want, but if Jeff isn't available in those vegetables, where does Jeff get his protein from? No, Jeff is. Oh, okay. Where where does buffalo get Jeff from? Of eating of the land, which is right, grass and stuff. Right, grass. Uh, and hang on a corn minute. Corn and maize. On. Are you mad? Right. Let's just think about. I'm what not you saying just said. eat grass. Let's just think about what you just said, right? Right. Let's just think about what you just said, right? I've got a jug of milk in the car. In 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 the. Uh, I've got a jug of milk in the. Yeah. Um, Do you drink breast milk? Hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> I've got a. I've got, there's milk in the fridge in your house yeah. right now, right? Yeah. So, but the milk comes from the cow, right. and the cow comes from the grass. I can't get milk from the fucking grass, cheesy. No, that has to be a process. Yeah. So Jeff, the protein I get but, from the red meat, I can't go and get Jeff from the grass, because there's a process to go through for the red meat to be able to produce the protein. No, that but was, you would if you ate veg. The, the cow turns that <laughs> vegetable. All that grain into protein. Yeah. Right. But it doesn't mean you can get that protein from the ground. It's like saying I can go and get coal from the mud. No, it's not. Because in a million years' time, yeah, because the process has to go through. But the cow's not born with protein, is it? Well, it is. It's got some amount of protein that it's got from its mother. But then it carries on eating and producing protein. It's in the meat. Are you telling me you can get Jeff the protein from grass because it, well, that I'd, must be the case because it's in. I've, I've not met cow. Jeff the protein, <laughs> but. What I'm saying is, is the cow will eat vegetables, yeah. grain, corn, fucking uh, soybeans, which is part of the reason why the Amazon's being cut down f to plant that to feed the cow. Like all the soybeans that are produced in the world, 90% of it goes to cattle. Um, which is an argument everyone says to me: says, "Oh, fucking, you have to produce the prote uh, soybeans to feed your fucking vegan ha diet." Like, well, 90% of it goes to cattle to feed the meat industry. Um, but the cow's not born with that set amount of protein it needs to continue to eat the grains no, born with it, it? And, and, and from what the, and its what mother the, and what the, but the mother uh, gets the protein what, from no no but what the, what the cow eats right so what the cow produces is body right. whatever chemical whatever chemicals so you're saying a cow doesn't get any protein from its food no no, you, no I didn't say that right did I I didn't even finish the sentence I didn't say what a cow has and produces his body from the byproducts to the fucking excrement to the uh, the carbon dioxide it breathes out, it, oh, did you know? from the methane, yeah. Car carbon dioxide breathes out, the methane excretes. It's not all due to what it eats. Right. Right. I don't like. I don't sweat because of what I ate. It's 
so this, what's contained in my sweat when I sweat is not because purely based on what I ate, unless I ate loads of garlic. Not purely based on what I ate. It's my point. Yeah. Like, so, you so to say, like, to say that the the cow's got protein in it because of it, the, you, and it got, because of the grass it ate. No, it's not the case. How does a gorilla get to the size it gets to? Just by eating fucking what bamboo. It's a different animal. Know. Yeah, I know it's a different it's a animal. Different way. But all I'm saying is that all he eats vegetables. Are they not meat eaters? No. And like an elephant, I oh, know it's a fucking big animal, but they fucking strong as fuck rhinos. I saw I'm a book. I'm not saying you can't live on a vegan diet. I'm just saying I'm well, say, my, you, you get plenty what? of protein from veg. That's my anyway. I don't disagree what, with you. Watch I the, don't disagree. With watch you. the film. Watch the film. You just watch it, and you can, at the end of it, you go, "Oh, that's a load of shit." But then I watched another film. No, I'm not minded to it, mate. But I, I watched another film called Forks Over Knives, and it's a diff. Anyway, the guy. Let's well, finish Casper. The guy wasn't. A vegan, he was a meat eater, ate all the fucking milk, dairy, all the rest of the shit. They got a guy on there and he had the biggest dairy farm in Minnesota or something, 7,000 cattle. And he got extradited out of the dairy industry for speaking out on the Oprah Winfrey show. And they got a thing in America now, which it was talked about on the. Because the guy that made the film went on the Joe Rogan podcast. Oh, that's him? Oh, yeah, I listened um, to him. Yeah. Kip yeah, yeah, yeah. Anderson. Yeah, yeah. And there's a Patriot Act in America now. So if you speak out, whether it's truth or not, about a, and you have an impact on an animal or a food industry, animal industry, you can get prosecuted under the Patriot Act. Yeah, and that's um, how they can keep, you know, they're going to film in all the places. Yeah, so this guy who did the dairy, who had this dairy farm, he spoke out and he was basically, pros they tried to prosecute him, it cost him hundreds of thousands of dollars in legal fees, but they tried to prosecute him for telling the truth on the Oprah Winfrey show, not even a lie. But now if he goes on and tells the truth, he'll get prosecuted just under the Patriot Act straight away. Um, and he says in it, he says you cannot be an environmentalist and still eat meat or dairy. Shit bust. Anyway, so uh, during the film, he then changed his diet to become a vegan. And everyone's like, oh, it's a vegan film. It's all about cows should live in the fields and all this sort of People assume to know what the film's about. It's actually just about how the meat industry are influencing the health boards and stuff like that in America. And then you watch another film, or I watched another film called um, Forks Over Knives. Yep. And it talks about the impact of a western diet high meat diet dairy and stuff on the human body and it talks through evolution so like in china and japan where you got the the oldest generation of people there who grew up eating rice and vegetables and a little bit of meat with their food they'll have a little bit of meat in the middle and they have all the vegetables and they'll have it's one third two thirds this every year isn't it like like, a third meat and then two thirds veg, green veg well well from these studies it was less meat more veg more rice but as generation as it goes down a generation more foods introduced like and then you get to generation now and it's all fast food and stuff i'm not saying it's all fast food but they're eating a lot more meat and because they're eating a lot more meat heart disease has gone up um diabetes has gone up and various other that's ailments not, and that's cancer. Not just down to, 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 to the, watch uh, the film watch, no, i'm just saying no, it's not just down to that based on your studies no but i'm 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 just going to say it's also sorry it's also down to things like the advancement of technology People sitting in front of TVs, people being less active, people being more depressed, people being, uh, well, yeah, main ones. For main, diabetes main ones. and heart disease. Yeah, well, mate, you've got to, have, got to be active. Right? right, well. Diabetes is a big thing on sugar as well, but go on, continue. So, oh, just stop me on diabetes. Right, so. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, we got the diabetes in a minute. Oh, you know, no, I, you, I, you are more well read in this stuff than me. I completely agree. Um, but I also think you go down a So, yeah, there were three, there were three people on there that have been, one was the narrator of the film. He went in and he started the doctors like right i want to put you on a plant-based diet basically whole food plant-based because you can be a vegan and still eat shit you can eat loads of fucking cakes and i think oreos are vegan and people are oh yeah i'm vegan i'm healthy and they fucking eat loads of fucking sugar and shit basically and they're just still fat um but this there was three people on there there was one guy who's he had diabetes he was taking nine types of pills nine different pills a day and injecting himself twice a day and it was costing him i think it was like eight hundred and fifty dollars a month or maybe it was more maybe like a lot more than that i can't remember the exact numbers and there was a woman on there she, like she was massively overweight she had diabetes and the cholesterol was really high and basically the, the one doctor i think it was one doctor was working with the woman and there was a different doctor working with the two guys like basically sorting their diet out and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And by eating a whole food plant-based diet over 22 weeks, I think, for the guy that was taking nine pills a time, it reversed his diabetes. He's no longer on any pills, injections, he's lost weight. And it's, it, he had 27 different ailments that were bothering him out of the 27, 26 had gone. 
Um, and then the woman, she lost weight, her diabetes is reversed. She went to her doctor who's prescribing the drugs. And she went, yeah, your diabetes is gone, da 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 da. She went, she went, do I still need to take the drugs? She went, oh yeah, you still need to take your drugs. She went, is this doctor trying to get you off the drugs? And she said, well, yeah, I hope so. And basically, her diabetes are gone, and the whole reason she's taking the drugs was because of her diabetes. And the whole diet change over, that was 21 weeks, I think it was. I mean, those things they reversed are, it. Those things are an extremist, mate. I mean, the thing is, we, no, I'm, I'm just saying that these were the studies during the production of the film. The film wasn't about these three; it was about the whole history of these no, two yeah. doctors. One of the problems with veganism, as well, like like now, is 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 is, it, is a similar thing to. Uh, there's a it's a massive industry, and you're getting as much bullshit. Oh yeah, but anything else. I mean, I mean, there's, people do it for different reasons. Like, some people go vegan because for the animal welfare, like because of the way animals are farmed and so on. Some people do it for the environment, some people do it for health. I did it for health and now it's gone to environment as well because of hearing people complain that like when I go sailing, there's people pulling plastics out of the sea. But then they're, they're well, what's, what's the point of pulling the plastic? They're, they're pulling the plastics out to save the sea, but then quite happy to continue fishing and eating the fish. Like um, when, so like there's a, uh, I mean, it's got a species depletion, not species depletion, but like, say, you, cods have been overfished. Oh, we've overfished cod, let's go and fish mackerel now. And they keep fishing that until that's been overfished and they switch to another species. So you had um, you James. The cod to come back, yeah. Sorry? You allowed the cod to come back. Yeah, but if you just didn't eat fish, then it wouldn't be a problem. But you're like, talking about uh, James Glancy was on here, talking about the, f the fishing industry and the impact on the sharks. Yeah. So with all the bycatch and everything, the more. We've, the way I've been thinking of it, the more fish you take out of the sea, that's the food for all the predators, so the sharks and the barracudas and all the rest of it. If you take away their food sources, not only are they being fished or caught in the bycatch nets by us and being killed that way, their food sources are also being depleted. And by watching these films, it's been proved, well, I believe that you can get all the proteins you need from the foods that I'm eating, or whole based plant foods, so you don't need to eat. Um, Fish or meat. What about places that don't have availability? Of that's different. Like, well, I say that's different. It's just you live in it. Like, uh, is it Iceland? Every year they they herd in these schools of pilot whales, and they slaughter them in the bays. Everyone's like, oh my god, this is terrible. I'm like, well, that's their food source. But the people get all upset about people killing whales because it's an majestic animal. But basically, it's like a cow to them because if they can't grow any crops and they can't grow any cattle, that is their f main food source. But it's not saying it's fucking right, but I'm saying, like in um, the island of Bekwi, there's still the one island in the Caribbean that's still allowed to hunt whales. So we just arrived and they caught three whales. Mm. They have to do it by rowboat. So they row out, harpoon the whale, bring it in. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, everyone's like, oh, I, I, how can they kill such a graceful animal? I'm like, well, it's fucking meat to them. It's a cow. They ain't fucking grow no cattle on here. If they are, it's not, it's like one or two per family, mm. if you can get one. So it's just a boost. It's, so their people's argument for that was, Oh yeah, well there's loads of cows. So if there are less cows, or cows are endangered, then it would be wrong to kill cows. And all. yeah, basically. Yeah, but that's right. That's the right way to look at it. It's a different. Well, the statistics change, mate. Right. But I'm saying, but you could grow. So you've got a cow and you're it's grazing on grass or plants or whatever, and you're giving it feed. Like you, you've had horses. How much how much food do you have to buy for a horse? Hay and fucking a animal true. food. That's yeah. True. So. You, you have to still buy that for a cattle, for cattle potentially, if they haven't got enough grass to graze on. Mm -hmm. So it's all just impacts, but you need to grow that vegetable somewhere else. That grain, that corn that could be grown, that is grown for cattle, could be grown for people and fed to people. Yeah, that would be, yeah, you don't need corn, are they? No, I'm just saying, but it's the land use I as well. So you can grow something else. You can grow fucking cabbages, potatoes, fucking anything. But, like, uh, um, so, but you need, but a cow will eat fucking shit ton more than I will eat. So the amount of space that's used to grow the crops to feed one cow could feed like fucking a hundred of me or more. I don't like, like the numbers are on the film. I don't know the yeah, exact yeah. numbers. So how do you, how do you, how do you, if that's the right way to go about it, to go vegan, how do you move society towards that in a way? It's that changing, that like everyone's like, oh, you can't do it because it's changing people's habits. People are, what I've noticed recently, because I'm just moaning about everything, um, it's people are quite happy to complain about something and complain about changing something like so all the plastics in the sea I'll start moaning about plastic straws in the sea like it's the biggest problem in the sea but with animal agriculture there's loads of waste that goes into the water system that goes out to the sea and creates water dead zones because the, the bacteria in the animal waste 
kills all the oxygen and whatnot in the area. But they're quite happy to complain about the plastic straws, but as soon as you tell them they have to change something else that's going to save, that's better for the environment, but it's going to affect them, they're not really interested. But, yeah, because it affects them. <laughs> so, like, everyone's current, like I said about the Amazon rainforest now, I keep seeing it on Instagram, everyone's saying, oh, the Amazon's been on fire for two weeks or fucking 20 days, no, one, no one's saying anything about it, but it's been being ripped down for animal agriculture anyway, for fucking decades. No one, no one said anything then. It's only now that it's on fire that everyone's sort of complaining, but who started the fires? Mm. It's just perspective, isn't it, I guess. Mm-hmm. So anyway, you watch this film, uh, Forks Over Knives, and it talks about the impact of, hum- of the, our diet on the human body. And yeah, it's just, there's loads of stats in there and proof. And it basically, they've studied a lot of stuff in um, Japan and China, and it's, then it's based in the US, the diets over there and how they eat and the effects it had like um, I think like the rise of heart disease oh no not rise of heart disease. yeah rise of heart disease in China and Japan has gone up but in America you've got all these different drugs for dealing with heart disease diabetes and all the rest of it and it's still rising but then you know, I suppose you've got all the, the pharmaceutical companies as well there in Korea. maybe they're all in to go I don't know because obviously they don't make money by people getting healthy so yeah. that's that anyway so I've changed my diet I feel a lot better I go to the gym I don't feel fucking tired I don't have I eat a fucking shitload of food and I don't like I'll have one big meal I don't feel stuffed I don't feel lethargic I can go to the gym after I do that I did it by cutting out carbs as much as I can and into but when I used to eat loads of meat I'd eat one I was fucking in a coma I did the I did the, I did the um, carnival there with it did I you? Did oh, because yeah, Jordan Peterson. Yeah, I did it for. Uh, I did. Um, well, it was one of the meat, well, meat and fish. Did you listen I, to? I didn't, I didn't. I wasn't looking for. It. I'll, I'll tell you about it. I wasn't looking for a diet. I can't remember. What, I was just trying to eat healthier. Because you get older and you think. Oh, okay. oh mate. I don't, um, it was more or less through. I was hearing different things. Not hearing different things. Different, different things. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Yoga and stretching. Eh? Yeah. Um, um, I try and stretch every morning or every night or throughout the day as well. I've got guys I work with around here and they're like 50 going on 60 and they're fucking hunched over shuffling along I go down to Flangoslin it's like where people go to die they're just, <laughs> they're just in bits but you see but you see old older people that do yoga I used to go to uh, an old ladies class with my sister to do yoga they're just they're fine they're going in there they're doing the stretching and everything because the more supple you are the, the better condition your body's going to be I got a, there was a guy through the sailing charity he broke his X29 commando uh, the real commando unit, and uh, <laughs> that's that's what I'll tell you. Um, he broke his back. <laughs> I've had some help from two nine. We've had some help from two nine. Uh, oh, Johnny Mercer. John, Johnny Mercer. <laughs> Johnny Mercer. Yeah, the real commandos. Because yeah. he turned up on this boat. Because there, there was the guy who was teaching me to sail. He's four two. I think he's four two. And this guy turns up and he puts his towel on the um, on the the boom, and it's like. Uh, army commando and he just looked oh, Dan looked at me and I looked at him and I was like oh, uh, but because uh, that's an all arms that's all they do is all arms commando like for me like everyone goes on about oh I've done P Company P Company wasn't the hardest thing for me it was the beat up beforehand because they're just trying to fucking break you <laughs> like absolutely and we were I was 17 then as well because we come through Harrogate they were like oh you're fucking soft as shit so they <laughs> smashed us I got Dickie Anderson walked through the doors <laughs> Welcome to Depot Joe, press up position down. I got fucking I thrashed before I even got through the, the fucking well, yeah. door. Because I was there in, um, what are we in, like September 2001. No, 2000, yeah, 2001. That's why I went there. So I got, I got to, I went there the year before you. Yeah, you, 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 must, time, you must have been the intake yeah. before me. Yeah. Uh, no, two before you. So if you had Dickie Anderson. 660. Oh, 667, I think. Oh, no, so four, six, yeah, because millions of intakes, mate. Yeah, I know, but I think it was. So we had Mark Broadbent, Steve Q was our screw, and then I oh, was this Steve Q's first platoon, and then uh, Dickie Anderson, we was his last one, and then okay. uh, Jim O'Donnell was our platoon sergeant. Little Scottish. Short yeah. Scott, yeah. Tall Sc- short Scott, Scottish. Short Scottish, yeah. 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 Hercules yeah. tattooed on his back. Did he? And, yeah, I'm sure he had a hurt, massive like, hurt tattooed on his back. Um, yeah. But yeah, got to depot. Welcome to depot. Press the position down. Yeah, How right. did I get into that? Um, 
Oh, commando course. Oh yeah. Yeah, and like, so how we gone to? Oh yeah, because this guy broke his back. Yeah. And uh, he's, I was looking at him. He's having a fag, and he's fucking hunched over. His back's fucked. He went, "Oh, I've got to go to chiropractor. My back's killing me." And I was like, "If you started doing like yoga and Pilates and built up your core muscles to support your body, because." At the minute, it's your spine is taking, and your back's fucked anyway, so your spine's taking all the weight, and you're hunched over like this, and you're fucking but, uh, in no. shit state. <laughs> so, I mean, if you go and do Pilates, yoga, and start improving your core strength, and start losing some weight as well, you're going to take that pressure and weight off your spine? And he's like, oh, I never, and he went and switched his chiropractor, and he said, oh, someone's recommend I start doing Pilates and yoga. He says, yeah, if you start doing that, I'll never have to see you again. And he's like, and as much as we talked about it, he never did it, but it just makes sense. But... For me now, I'm 35 now, and I, with the problems with my legs, I don't know at what point that's going to impact me where I can't do anything. So I'm just trying to condition my body as best as I can now to to last that little <coughs> well, bit longer. Big thing, uh, one of the big stats I saw, I I, I heard or read or it's like, mate, these days it's hard to remember where you get any information from. Really. Mm. Like, it's, it's but um, it, it's about uh, the cause of mortality when you get older, and you're talking about care homes and getting admitted to a care home and uh, getting admitted to a care basically people who get admitted to a care home like dead within six or seven months or eight months and if they get moved between care homes dead within like two months they move to care homes but the whole point you you only end up got, most of the time you end up got a, a care home because you can't care for yourself when they say you can't care for yourself it basically means you can't get out of a chair you can't you, you know you can't get yourself out of a chair you can't move about between your furniture yeah. and your house freely without assistance and a massive one was um basically tied in with that is not being able to get yourself up after you fall over right right and then and then you pull that back how do you okay. test that push them over and yeah no it's it's all to do with so a massive way to keep yourself from going to care home and therefore live longer is um being able to stop yourself tripping over so walk it walking running well walking mainly there's go a out, go out walking you, you if you it. trip over your legs you keep walking i know you keep walking continuation right. You trip over, you, you're, my, my, these guys, you see these guys walking around right, here, like, fucking right. years old. How old do you before, think he right? is? Who? Paul Daniels. Um, There's a guy who walks around here with two dogs every day, twice a day, for like an hour. He doesn't stop fucking talking either. Uh, <laughs> is, uh, I'd say, well, I know when he, I know when he retired. Right. How long ago he retired. So I'm going to, I'm going to say he's like 75. 76. He doesn't, he doesn't 76 and he's one of the most he's, but there's a guy there's a guy that lives just down from me he was in the Alps climbing last year he's like 60 mate those guys are, they'll, if they don't live forever right, they won't they won't live out their dying years in a fucking care hole no. they'll be out active. they'll be in mate he's, he's well, I'm not saying he's towards the end of his life but he's still in his house he's still yeah, active he's still getting around yeah, um, that's it it's just being active so, yeah. and like he's just, just walking just walk yeah. even just walking it's like uh who was I saying it? I think it was the last podcast. Was it the last podcast? No, it wasn't. You what, just going out and doing 10 minutes in the morning? No, no, I was just saying, like, you know, you, you take, you, um, setting goals, achieving goals. And, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a victim of some time. Of, <clears throat> I want to go, like, fitness-wise, I'm not going to do this. I, you, you set yourself a, fitness-wise, I'm talking, I set myself a goal fucking so far ahead of what I'm capable of now because my fitness is not yeah. what I before. You don't even bother trying to start it. You don't even, this, it's like a pipe dream. So it's like you get people on a, you know, you get someone sat on a couch, a couch potato, sit there, or someone who's all like an ex-military guy or girl who's got out and just fucking the fitness going down the pan. And when you're in, you can smash out an eight miler, ten miler, you know, bloody 60, 70 press ups in a minute or whatever yeah. you used to do. And now they're sat on the couch and like. Mate, no one did and, 60, and, 70 press ups in the BFT. <laughs> They do well, 30. <laughs> How many do you have to do for a green pass? Yeah, 30. One point fucking is, so, they're, so sitting on the couch thinking, no, no. Your task should be as if it should be just more than what you normally do in the day. So if you're normally doing just walk into the shop to get your fucking beers or whatever, no, go out and you're gonna go for a ten minute walk. So that's it, ten minute walk. And then or if you're gonna go, I'm gonna start running, I'm gonna run, I'm gonna run half hour no, go out, say I'm gonna go out for half an hour, I'm gonna run as much as I can, and in between I'm gonna walk. I'm gonna be out for half an hour. And if I end up walk if I end up walking for twenty five minutes and a half hour I've ran for five you still done something you've not done yeah. for years. It's an achievement. Wait. And the next time you're going to set your goal higher. Well, I'm going to try and run for ten this time. There's a guy Natural, who works for me. Got out of the army. I think he did his 22, and he lives in, down in Clan. And he's like, oh, yeah, I've, I've got fat now, so I'm trying to get out and run with weight. And I was like, what? He's like, yeah, I'm only doing four miles. I said, like, well, why don't you just do something? 
like because he's recovering from a knee injury I was like what are you doing like non-impact stuff he was like what do you mean just, just go on a bike do some CV you're still burning fat you're still getting fit your CV's getting better you're just not smashing your knees in all the time I yeah. hate running because mm. well, my knees are fucked now anyway I can't run anyway but even when I was in I still suffer with knee problems and um, if I'd known about or if I'd thought about it then I'd just done a lot less impact stuff yeah because yeah. Um, it's the worst for you especially tabbing with weight fucking fucks you right up um, but yeah just non-impact so cross trainer cycling or you like walking's fine but just don't go fucking running with however much weight you have on your back like you said That's small true. goals but That's I was trying to say to this guy just, just go out walking go, go on a bike do something else um, but yeah, it's all keep it live longer. I'll say set your goals, but sort of within your means. Yeah, make them realistic. Yeah, you get to sit aside, make them realistic because it's more just set your goal a little bit less. Set your goal something that's realistic. Even even when you're starting off, even so, it's, you know it's easy to achieve. Yeah, I can I can go out and walk for twenty minutes. I walk to the shop for a minute. Well, keep it going because you, it's something you wouldn't normally do. You're exerting yourself and you wouldn't normally do. Yeah. I'm talking about fat back now. Just go and do it. Realistic, set it because it may seem a bit shit, but at the end of it, you've gone, you've achieved, you get that good feeling in your body, and the next thing you're more likely to go out and do something. Mm. You feel you're capable of more, and then you set targets. Did you, the next thing you're doing did you um, hear about that advertisement? I think it was last year, where what's the second biggest cause of cancer? Begins with an O and ends in All Y. Sex. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Obesity. Right. And like loads of fat people have like complaining about it saying oh we're being fat shamed because oh, of this right? fat, shaming, but, but, fat shaming bullshit no but for this particular advert I went, oh, that, but it's like it's a scientific research that obesity calls is the second biggest cause of cancer in the UK and they're all moaning about it so what you take it down so you can just carry on going the way you're going and it just gets me I've got a mate who works and um, she does a fertility clinic once a week and she's a gynecologist surgeon and all the rest of it but she's she's does these clinics with people and they're coming in and oh, I can't get pregnant we want kids and they're looking for IVF I'm like well you need to lose weight first the majority of people that are going in there are overweight yeah and so like but there's there's the cost of IVF as well but if you just go and lose weight naturally your sperm will become stronger you become more fertile and you can naturally have children if that's what you want so I don't think IVF should be a thing in this country because okay. it, it costs the NHS so much money anyway everyone's like saying about how we need more money going to the NHS if, in my mind, I, I think there should be something less... Something controversial coming here, come yeah, on. Yeah, I think okay. there should be less people on the planet, right? You, when, I spoke, are... to you, when I spoke to you last time, you were like, no, we need to breed for su su uh, survival of the species. To con but continue... Hang on a minute, I'll have to go back and listen no, to No, you, no, I... it wasn't on the podcast, it was like... Ah, in the, yeah, in the but I didn't mean like breed like bunny rabbits, mate. Well, like that's what we're doing. Yeah, what we are now, nine billion? I agree, but we can't not breed... Yeah, so you go to like one or two yeah, children control, per family. You control the breeding. Yeah. yeah right. But then everyone's like, oh, you're a fucking fascist, you're like Hitler. Well, no. If we carry on breeding the way we're going, there will be no resources left. To, like, with the demand on meat, you need to keep fucking cutting more fucking forests down and everything to breed to farm more meat and everything else. If you start cutting the population down, like, what was it? Fucking 1800s? It was like two or one billion or something like that. And in 200 years, it's gone to nine. If you, went, if you went down to fucking two million people on the planet, you could carry on eating all the fucking beef you want. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 yeah, all but then, but then, cheesy, you'd have the same, you'd have the same problem in your head that you have now. Thousands of years later, you'd have meat eating humans. You go vegan, can't eat beef. Well, the vegan said back in the day that we should have two million people and you can have all the beef you want. What do you mean to have the same? What? As in, but the population will grow. No, if you control, if you got to a sustainable level and you controlled it, like everyone's saying, "Oh, well, China tried it, but it didn't work." The reason it didn't work in China is because they killed off all the kids. The, well, the <laughs> girls anyway. Stick them down the sewer. No, fuck! I don't want that one. I want a boy. So yeah, now they got like, who, who was it? People who, don't know about that. People don't know. Who was it? Was talking about it? Was I feel? Was it Rick Cole? I don't know. Someone was talking about population of the world, and um, yeah, the Chinese killed. It's the first one was a girl. It was just, it's just, a, yeah, it's well, so yeah. just explain it for people who right don't know so about. Oh, when was it it's like when we were kids so early 2000s or maybe in the it's 90s it's not long not... stopped mate only the last few years they've stopped the no, one child policy no no yeah. it's like yes. 10 years ago they stopped it no because no they've stopped it long because they've got a generational problem now whereas these boys that were born right anyway so China set in a policy where you could only have one kid per family yeah so 
because a uh, boy is more valuable in China and it's like more likely to get a better job and bring more money into the house, they wanted a boy. So if they had a girl born, they'd be like, don't want that. Fucking, I see ya. Some people would keep, keep the girl, but others, there was, I've read stories about a like fire service cutting a pipe out and there's a fucking baby girl stuck in a pipe because someone shoved their baby down the fucking pipe because they don't want it. Because they want a boy. And so now they've got a generational problem where they're all men. There are very few females there, and they're like, oh, well, it didn't work for China. Well, it fucking did. Could you, could you imagine how big China would be now if they didn't introduce that one child per family policy mm. then for, what was it, 10, 15 years? Fucking, ex- well, they'd be outgrowing themselves anyway. Yeah, yeah. So, but there's a way of doing it and doing it wisely. Like, it wouldn't be a problem in this you country. Can't, you, you, can't, you can't do it. This is but like, how many people have got in this no, 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 this is like because people's brains, mate, they don't work. They yeah, because oh, you they don't look long term. Yeah, short-term. they're short term. Yeah. Um, and it's why should I? Sh- why should my generation suffer? Why should my f- family suffer when all the previous ones couldn't? Why could? So uh, go. I'm so, not. I'm, no, no, I agree no, no, with you. No, no. Right. So rural population. There's already enough people as it is. So there's no need for IVF. If you can't naturally breed children, then maybe that's nature's way of saying you're not meant to have but kids. But in this age, everyone should have equal, equal fucking rights. No, mate, fuck equal you. <laughs> right. <laughs> If you can't naturally breed kids, then that's unfortunate, right? There are hundreds of thousands of children out there that need adopting. Go and adopt a child. That'll solve the home, that'll solve the adoption problem, and then it's like you don't. But if you really want your own kid, go lose some weight. I'm yeah, saying if you are, no, imp- that's, yeah, that's yeah, right. Well, let's not assume that everyone can't. No, no, their own no, kid no. But I'm just saying it's. Like, but you could you still eat a load of shit. You can you, you can eat the right things that will help produce healthy sperm in cases not all cases yeah Sometimes yeah like but some if, if you are just I see what you're saying if you, I agree with you if you just I, naturally yeah, cannot breed you. then that is unfortunate I agree with you. Adopt a go child. and adopt a child That people are like oh no but I want my own I fucking hate my dad right and I am living proof that just because someone is your own DNA doesn't mean that they're going to love you and be loyal to you people buy dogs a dog is fucking loyal to you you're not genetically that fucking dog's parent and a dog will if you look after a dog and bring it up in the right way a fucking child is the same well in my mind because I'm just black and white a, tr- a child will be the same thing if you look after that kid as they're growing up and they see you as their carer or parent what's it matter if they're your blood or not so that's the IVF plus with IVF they have to implant free embryos so you if you so you get free embryos and all three can take which happened with my uncle and auntie they are triplets they only right. wanted one kid but the doctor that they went to, he's so good, his success rate was like 100%. And they went, we only want you to put one embryo in us, so I have to put in three. So they end up with triplets. Fucking hell. And you have to have those three kids. Yeah. So they ended up with triplets instead of one kid. Um, so I said this to my mum. My mum's like, no, oh, your cousins are IVF children. you saying they shouldn't be alive. I was like, well, no. But like from now, if you just stopped IVF treatment, it's going to save the NHS a shitload of money. Because people get three attempts on the NHS and it costs like three or four thousands yeah. maybe more yeah. plus the consultancy and everything else if you stop that then there's all that extra money going to other places yeah. that other resources in the NHS that need it um, same with the diabetes thing if you start treating diabetes through health and habit rather than drugs you get more money going towards that I agree 100%. Um, and so then will population that's going to well not saying that's naturally going to decrease but then if you start saying that if you did it a policy where every family could have two kids, you're just going to replace yourself technically. But if you did it, every family had one per, one kids per family, then the population would start to reduce. And there's people like, oh well, how are you going to control it? I was like, well, oh, fucking guy gets a vasectomy, shit bust. Because it, they're like, oh well, what if he breaks up and he meets another woman and he wants another kid? Well, that's tough shit. He's already got one kid. Just dedicate your time to that one instead of having like seven or eight. Words of wisdom. That, that's why I'm getting a vasectomy. <laughs> um, <coughs> How long is that? Hour and a half. Hour and a half. Anything else? No. Yeah. Good, Good mate. Good pleasure as always. Loving it. Look at it. Can you see it here? <laughs> <laughs> Manga. Oh, right. Let me do the intro, the outro. We're going to do it here. Yeah, good to go then.